Welcome to the presentation of a lecture from Gnostic Radio, a free public service from the Gnostic tradition of Samael Aun Beor. Gnosis is the root wisdom of the world's greatest knowledge. Gnosis is a universal teaching of practical science, whose goal is absolute liberation from suffering and the complete development of the human being. This lecture is one of hundreds available as free downloads, podcasts, or transcriptions. Our lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures to find teachings that suit you. Twice a month, Gnostic Radio broadcasts live and includes a free online classroom allowing listeners to see images, read related scriptures, and ask questions of the speaker. To learn how to participate, visit GnosticRadio.org. Gnostic Radio is a service of Glorianne Publishing, a non-profit organization. The lectures and radio broadcasts have been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. To make a donation, visit GnosticRadio.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Invocation of Solomon. This lecture is a continuation of uh, the prayer of the Lord, which is already in our website. This, in order to understand a more deeper, who is the Father? In other words, our real being, our inner self. This is our Father who are in heaven. In Gnosis, we understand that the Father is a multiple, perfect unity. It's called the army of children. In the Bible, it's called the children of Israel, related to the different archetypes that we have within. Solomon, the king, left a very powerful invocation that uh, relate to all of the parts in synthesis of our inner being, our inner Father who is in heaven. Remember that in the lecture, Prayer of the Lord, we explained that Ha Shamaim in Hebrew, which means the heavens, also means the names, because God in Kabbalah in Hebrew language is Elohim, and this word Elohim which is uh, mistakenly translated as God, is indeed gods and goddesses. And the invocation of Solomon embraces all of those parts that are within, in order to invoke them, 
and to use the forces of our inner self, our inner being, for any purpose. In these times in which we are in uh, trouble, we have to memorize this invocation in order for our inner being to assist us in difficult uh, in the difficult aspects of our life. Of course, it's a very long invocation. That's why Master Jesus of Nazareth gave a very short one that synthesized all of this. But we are going to explain the invocation of Solomon in order for you to understand what the Father, uh, the invocation of uh, the Our Father, prayer of the Lord, embraces when we are doing it. To begin, remember that at the very end of the prayer of the Lord, we say, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and everlastingly. Amen. And all of these words embrace the whole tree of life. For that... Before entering into this explanation, let us read what the Master Samael on the Or uh, wrote in his book, The Manual of Practical Magic. The wise Solomon left us a marvelous invocation that we can use to ask for help from the superior powers. With this invocation, we receive help for our individual needs. If you wonder why we place the graphic of Tutankhamun in the invocation of Solomon, it's because in Kabbalah and Alchemy, we study the three wise men, or the three kings, which in Christianity are named uh, Melchor, Baltasar, and Gaspar. But uh, in the Old Testament are symbolized by Saul, the first king of Israel, then David, and finally Solomon, who was famous because in his kingdom he had a lot of gold. Because all of this symbolizes a chemical process that we perform in our soul. In the, in the beginning, we are Sheol, which translated into English is hell. And then we turn into David, which is a, a purified soul. And finally, we achieve the level of Solomon, in which all the internal soul, parts of the soul, become Gold, pure. Of course, Solomon is not the first one that achieved this perfection. That's why, since we didn't find any other image uh, of Solomon related with gold, we find the best one that we have from Egypt, which is Tutankhamun. That you know, all of him is gold. Because he really reached that level that Solomon the king reached. And that's why uh, Tutankhamun is really a great master. Whose soul is pure gold. So, as we explained, the invocation of Solomon is really a very long invocation. You find it in the second graphic of our PDF. And we are going to explain, of course, all of it in this lecture in order to understand it. First, visualize the tree of life, which 
as you see there, is divided <coughs> in four worlds. Atziluth, which is the world of archetypes, where we find all of the parts of our being in the state of uh, not activity, but in potentiality. Then we have, immediately after the world of Fatsiluth, the world of Bria, which means creation. Then the world of formation, which is Yetzirah. And finally, the world of action and matter, the physical world, which is called Asia. These four worlds relate with our own internal constitution. Because everything that we find in each world, we have. But remember, in potentiality, our duty is to develop that completely in order to become Adam which is an androgynous being, male-female, made into the image of God. In order to comprehend the next explanation, visualize the four worlds of Kabbalah, because all of them are related with the holy name of God, which in Hebrew are spell Yod He Vav He. In English, in many Bibles, they translate this tetragrammaton into Yehovah. We in Kabbalah pronounce it Yod Hava. This is how we pronounce the holy name of God. Yod Hava. In Kabbalah, we always refer to numbers. Because, as you know, these spheres are called the ten sephiroth. As you can count them, they are ten. Sephiroth in Hebrew means to count. Counting. That's why we say Kabbalah relates to numbers. And all of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet relate to a certain number. In synthesis, we say the letter Yod is related with 10. It's the number 10, or the 10th letter. Then we find the second world of Bria, which relates to the second letter, which is the letter He. The letter He has a value of 5. So that's why when we talk about the world of Bria, we said the world of yod He, or as in English says, the world of Jah. This Jah is written in Hebrew with two letters, Yod and He. The addition of both make 15. So the second world of Bria relates to the number 15 of the sacred name of God. Remember that the word Jah, written with two letters, Yod and He, is the very end of that famous word that everybody sings, Hallelujah. Hallelujah means to praise. And Jah means the polarity of God. Male, female. Hallelujah. 
When we say that, we are pointing at God as male-female. No masculine, as many people misunderstand that. When we enter into the third world, which is related with the letter Vav, the letter Vav has the value of six. So therefore we say the third world has the value of 21. So this is how you see in numerology. When you reach the, le the bottom, which is the physical world, and then you take the whole name. yod Hey vav Hey. This is the famous tetragrammaton in Greek. means the four-letter name. So the whole addition of this is 26. And when you make the addition of all the numbers, you have 72. That's why in Kabbalah, we say that there are 72 ways of pronouncing the name of God. These 72 names of God is what is called Hashamayim, the names in plural. Because Hashem means the name, but Hashamayim or Hashemim, the names which is usually translated as heavens. So all of those names are synthesized in the number nine. Nine is precisely the mystery of how we develop all of these names, which relate to all the archetypes to all the children, to all the army that we have within. It is what is called the self-realization of the being. As you see, the number nine is related with the nine sephira, which is called yesod. If you count from the top, Keter, Chochma, Bina, Chesed, Gebura, Tifereth, Netzach, Hod, Yesod. It's a number nine. And the number tenth is Malkut, the physical world. So the number nine in relation with the body of the human being is the sexual organ. Keter is situated on top of the head is called the crown. Chochma is situated to the right part of the brain and Bina to the left. We are looking at the tree of life from the back of the human being, not from the front because the tree of life is a spinal column. So then, Chesed is the left shoulder. Geburah, I mean, is the right shoulder. The left is Geburah, the left. And Tifereth is a heart. Then we have Netzah, the right leg. Hod, the left. Yesod, the sexual organs. And Malkut, the feet. In with, really with the physical body. But by studying all of this, of course, we have that the physical body receives all the forces which are above, that we call heavens, that we call the names. But receive it through the sexual organ. That's why you see there 
that your sod, which is the sexual organ, is immediately above Malkut. So that's why the emphasis that all religions take or have in the sexual energy. If you study all religions, you will find that all the devotees always take care of the sexual force in different ways. And this is precisely the reason why. Because your sod is the origin of the physical body. To synthesize, all of us came from the womb, the uterus of our woman, mother. And of course, the seed was placed into the womb by a man for a sexual organ, which is called the sperm. The sperm. So as you see, this physical body comes from Yesod, physically speaking. So, in the Kabbalah, Gebura means power. So, when at the end of the prayer of the Lord, we say, For thine is the kingdom, we are placing God, of course, above. Because the world of Atziluth is the world of God. Thine is the kingdom. Malkut in Kabbalah is kingdom. So when we said, for thine is the kingdom, we are saying, for our physicality is yours. I am using all the energies that I have in my physical body. For you, my inner God, my Father. Remember that that Father is male, female. If we call it parent, I guess it will be better. Because we always associate Father with a masculine gender. But the reality is that that Father who is in heaven is androgynous, male, female. So when we say thine is a kingdom, we are saying that the female aspect, which is in the very bottom of the tree of life, is its femininity. We are offering that feminine constitution, which is our physicality, to God. Thine is the kingdom. It means that if we are performing the prayer of the Lord, we have to know that physically we have to behave Sexually, in the right way. Because otherwise, how are we going to say it for thine is the kingdom? If we are not taking care of our physicality, for God, not for the neighbor of our of friends or physical parents, but for ourselves. Because this is the work that is very personal, individual. And this says, for thine is the kingdom and the power. Gebura is the power. But we have to understand that this Gebura that we call the power relates to the sexual potency that descends from Gebura into the heart directly into the sex. That's the power. So we are saying, for thy is the kingdom and, thy, and the power. When we said, and, and, in Hebrew, in Kabbalah is, va. And it's always written only with one letter. The letter vav. That is va. So, it's tifereth. And Tifereth also symbolizes the human soul. That human soul that is there inside that physical body, seated, listening this lecture. So that human soul is the one that is doing the prayer or the invocation or anything. 
And we are doing that invocation. We are performing it inside the body. The body is just a vehicle. But when we say dying is the kingdom, my temple, my physical body is dying. And the power, the sexual power that descends from a Geburah into Yesod is also dying. That means that we have to know the secret of sexuality. The power of Geburah is called in the book of Revelation, the locusts that are released from the bottomless pit, which is Yesod, the well, where we have the foundation of all the forces. And that's why we say, for thine is the power, and when we said and, we are uniting the soul with the sex, heart and sex. That's why what we call love. When we are in love, we feel love in the heart. But we fulfill that love in the sexual act. So when we are in the sexual act, we have to put the heart, in other words, to hook Tifereth to Yesod. Because the letter Vav which means and is a hook in Kabbalah that unites. And that's why the letter Vav, which is that, obviously when the man and the woman are in a sexual act, they are hooked. But their heart also has to be hooked in order to be and. You see, because the word and means this and this other. So in Kabbalah, and means Tifereth and Yesod. And then we say, and the glory. The glory is Hod, which means that light that shines in the planet Earth, for instance, and that we call it solar light. And that we have also within, where we said, and the glory means that all of that light which I have in my sex, in my physicality, will shine for you. And then we go forever, which is Netzach. The word Netzach means, has many names. It means eternity, means forever, mind, forehead. Forever. And then we go into the mind. Hmm? Remember when it says forever is the mind. And everlastingly we go up here. To the world of the spirit which is Hesed. We go like this. Up. Everlastingly. Because Hesed is mercy. Everlastingly. Everlastingly. Mercy is the uh, mercy of God is for everlasting to everlasting. And then we said, Amen. Amen. Keter Chokma Bina. Amen. 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 Usually, always, all the prayers in Kabbalah in Hebrew said three times Amen, Amen, and Amen. Because we refer to these three higher sephiroths Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keter Chokma Bina. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Has many names in different religions. So you see you, what is the very end of that? But when we say all of that, we give all of this circle around the tree of life and we go into the Amen, means that at the very end of the supplication, we are putting all what we are to God up there. Which, of course, in theory, is very beautiful. But in practice, it's very difficult to fulfill. It has to be performed in different steps. And this is precisely the point here, as you can see, because all the power that we have resides in the sexual energy. 
and then we know how to channel that energy in different levels, we are developing the different archetypes that we have within. Because only the sexual energy can develop that. There is no other energy in the world that can develop that. The fact is that physically speaking, we were sperms. But thanks to the nine months that that energy developed that sperm into the womb of our mother, the physical body developed. As below, so above. As above, so below. If we want to develop all the archetypes that we have in our spirit, we have to utilize the same energy. But the procedure is different, and we have to learn. That's why you find here, in the whole invocation of the white Solomon, that we find here, that we are going to explain little by little, you can find how to pronounce it in the website. The first supplication that we find of the prayer of the Lord related with all the tree of life is powers of the kingdom be ye under my left foot and in my right hand. So as you see, the powers of the kingdom are the sexual powers. So when we are asking that, we are of course addressing all of those beings that know the mystery of alchemy and that can assist us. Because the power of God that, are, that is in the space, which is the creative energy, goes into the very center of the earth. As we have it in our very center of the earth, which is our physicality. That creative power of God is called the Holy Spirit. So it goes into the very center of the earth. And that is the energy that our own particular spirit, which is called Chesed, utilizes for our own development. That's why we say, powers of the kingdom, be ye under my left foot. Because the earth nourishes all of that energy through the left side of our body. That is what we call the energy of Ida, the energy of the earth that rises in the left side of the tree of life. And that reaches and goes up. But when we say it under my left foot, meaning that we are controlling it as a king or a queen. If you are saying the energy of the earth is under my left foot, is I am saying I control my sexual energy that is in the left side. And in my right hand, the right hand is the Sephira Chesed, which means mercy. It's also called Gedula, greatness or goodness. That Gedula is what Moses said in the book of Genesis. Is the Ruach Elohim, or the Spirit of God that was moving upon the face of the waters. So when we said in my right hand, it means that I am concentrated in my inner most, my inner being, my inner God. That he is handling the sexual power of the earth in my body. So you have to be concentrated in knowing what you're saying in the moment where you say, Powers of the kingdom be ye under my left foot and in my right hand. 
And then we say, glory and eternity. Take me by the two shoulders and direct me in the paths of victory. Here, we had to address glory and eternity, which is Hod and Netzach, which are related with Ida and Pingala, the two cords that entwined in the spinal column, making the caduceus of Mercury. Caduceus of Mercury relate to the two polarities of the sexual energy that are related to the ovaries in the woman and to the testicles in the man. So it means that we are working with the powers, the two polarities in our body. And on top of the caduceus of Mercury, there you find a big caduceus or a big sphere on top of those two serpents is a symbol of your head, which is Netzach, your mind. So that's why it says the paths of victory. Victory is also Netzach, but you have to visualize your physicality. Glory and eternity take me by the two shoulders and direct me in the paths of victory. All your spinal column up. This is a very alchemical invocation. And then you address your inner self, which is your soul and your spirit. Mercy and justice. Mercy and justice. Be ye the equilibrium and the splendor of my life. The equilibrium of the two polarities of mercy and justice is the central column of the tree of life, which is your very spinal column. And the splendor of your life is precisely Tifereth. Tifereth is a splendor, meaning, let my heart shine with the splendors of my life, my sexual energy. That is what in Hebrew is called Haya. So you see, everything that you are saying there is what you are doing. And if you don't know, you have to learn. Because this powerful invocation is almighty if you are doing the work that the invocation is demanding for, for you. And then you go up into the top of your brain and you said intelligence and wisdom. The left hemisphere of the brain and the right hemisphere of the brain be my crown or crown me the top of the head you find there keter which means crown so when you finish that you have to be concentrated in what you are pronouncing because there are many people that know this Invocation by memory. But to know it by memory is easy. The intellect is just those, that faculty that allows us to memorize many things. But to comprehend that and to visualize that is related with the soul, with the heart. And if you are doing it, of course, has more power. Because there are different levels of perfection or development and it depends of how much energy you have in the different parts of your body your brain your heart your lungs your kidneys your sex 
in order to, for this invocation to work. Because just by uttering it, like many people in the Catholic religion, they know the pater noster by memory and recite it just like that while thinking that they have to go to the mall or to the movies tomorrow or I have to eat something after I finish this. That doesn't work like that. You, you have to meditate in what you are saying, pronouncing, in order for that to have uh, results in your soul. That's why Master Samael on the earth said, the ten non sephiroth come from Sephirah. Here you find above this graphic the word Sephirah. Related with Ein Sof and the word Ra, which is a sort of light. Sephirah. It's related with energy. It said the Divine Mother. Sephira, who resides in the heart temple. Because in the temple of your heart, you have the energy of your Divine Mother. The mantra of the Divine Mother is Eo, which is the ten emanations of Prakriti. In other words, the ten Sephiroth. As you see the word here, Sephiroth is plural. In Sephira is singular. But all of this... Ten Sephiroth emanate from the Cosmic Mother, in other words. The Cosmic Mother has many symbols in different religions. It's just something very high. But here we symbolize it, or symbolize her, with a Sephira, which is a circle, a sphere. Like the womb is a sephira. And from the womb we come out. And we, in our constitution, we have ten sephiras. Same meaning. Cosmically and uh, microcosmically. After we finish all of that part, we go again, as you see, at the very bottom, which is Malkut, the very bottom of the tree of life. And we say, Spirits of Malkut, lead me betwixt the two pillars upon which rests the whole edifice of the temple. The spirits of Malkut, or in other words, the spirit of Malkut, is what in Kabbalah we call the Shekinah. The divine mother that we have within, particular. Because Sephirah is a cosmic mother. But Shekinah is our own particular individual mother. Remember the commandment among the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and your mother. That doesn't relate to the physical mother and father, even though we have to respect them. But that commandment relates to our inner jaw. Father, mother, Abba and Ima within. So that is our own particular Shekinah inside that we had to discover and to visualize. That's the spirit of Malkut. Malkut is the earth. The spirit of Malkut, the earth, is Mother Earth. In this day and age, there are many groups that are celebrating and worshiping Mother Earth. Mother Earth really is a being that exists. But in order for us to have the right and the bliss of seeing her as a rapture samadhi, we had to gain that. The Divine Mother Shekinah, 
That's the spirit of the earth. But we said spirits. Because we are re uh, addressing here men and women. Because in the same way that I have my mother, my wife also has her mother. Both spirits are the spirits of Malkut that work together in the work of alchemy. That's why we say it's spirits of Malkut. In the sexual act, men and women are united in uniting the two forces, the two spirits, the two bodies, the two Malkuts. Leave me betwixt the two pillars. The two pillars are, of course, the right and the left pillar, and the center, which is in between, is my spinal column. Because there is where my Divine Mother rises as that energy that we call Kundalini. So when you are saying that, you visualize your own mother inside, and you say, Spirit of Malkut, lead me between the two pillars, upon which rest the whole edifice of the temple. The two pillars of the temple are the man and the woman. That's the secret of the two pillars of masonry. You have to study that, because life cannot exist without these two pillars. That's why in the the three sephiroth of form are found in the pillar of severity, which is the left of the tree of life, where we find Binah, Geburah, and Hod. Three sephiroth of energy are found in the pillar of mercy, the right, which is Chokhmah, wisdom, he said, mercy, and it's ah, victory. And then, the pillar of equilibrium, which is betwixt the two pillars, are the pillars, that is between the two pillars, where all of the distinct levels of the consciousness are found. The consciousness is a soul that has to develop and that is, of course, Keter, the crown, Tifereth, the heart, Yesod, the sex, and Malkut, the physicality. It means that when we are working in equilibrium, we are concentrated in the pineal gland, which is the crown chakra, the Sahasrara chakra together aligning with the heart, which is Tifereth. And the power that is, of course, giving that union is Yesod. In Malkut, the physicality. Behold here the importance of studying the tree of life, which is written in the book of Genesis. Now, let us continue. We go up into the two kidneys because the angels of Netza and Hod are the fires of the kidneys that connect us to those worlds above. We say, angels of Netzah and Hod, establish me upon the cubic stone of Yesod. Meaning that the powers of the kidneys would establish me with more power in my sexual energy. When you study Taoism, you understand that the power of the sexual energy, the potency, lies on the kidneys. If you have healthy kidneys, powerful kidneys, you will have always a very powerful energy. I in either size, whether men or a woman. So you have to always vi uh, visualize your kidneys, the, the fires on the side and hot, or the angels that we call here, which are energies, 
that we have to channel. That's why you find there in the graphic Shiva Shakti from the Hindu pantheon and they are placed on that symbol that is called Lingam Yoni. In India, that is very common. The Lingam Yoni is a place where they worship God and they pour milk, as you can see there, milk on top of the Lingam. Lingam is a phallus and Yoni is a vagina. So the vagina united with the phallus is called lingam yoni. In other words, the best way to worship God is in the sexual act. And the worst way to damn ourselves is to use the sexual act as a demon, as an adulterer. A fornicator, which is what humanity does in this day and age. But the real devotee of the Holy Spirit is what we call here the Holy Spirit and Mary in Christianity. Or in other words, Abraham and Sarah in the Old Testament, archetypes that you work with when you are in a sexual act. So that's why the serpent is related with the symbol. Because the serpent that healed the Israelites in the wilderness, that Moses said to the Israelites, you want to be healed of your lust? You have to worship the brazen serpent. It's written in the book of Numbers. That brazen serpent is called in India Kundalini. And that's the way. Everything related with this invocation is worshipped to God. Master Samael Onveor said, The third triangle becomes very interesting. Because this is the magical triangle formed by the mind, or Netzah, the astral body, or Hod, and the ethereal body, or Yesod, which is also the basic sexual magic principle of universal life. Why this is called magical triangle? Undoubtedly, it is because high magic is exercised in the kingdom of the mind and in the kingdom of the astral and even in the in Klipot or the infernal worlds. There is no doubt that Nesach is where we can find hermetic magic and in Hod we find natural magic. This word magic that uh, people use in this day and age a lot comes from the ancient uh, language of Persia. Mag. And that means priest. So when you talk about magic, you're talking about priesthood. The priesthood of the mind, the priesthood of your heart, and the priesthood of your sex. Sexual magic, maituna, is called priesthood of the sex. In the heart, you have the priesthood of the heart related with hod, masses, rituals, in which you invoke the forces of the cosmic Christ in order to feed your soul. And uh, hermetic magic, in which you utilize the powers of your mind in order to heal and help the neighbor. The Bible talks about that priesthood in different parts, in different books. They show, or it shows, how the prophets were utilizing hermetic magic 
in order to help humanity. About the rituals of Hod, you find a lot in the Bible and in many other religions. Different rites, ceremonies that are performed in the different temples, synagogues, churches, baskets, etc. So this is how you have to understand what is the priesthood. It's the same as magic. If you are not in chastity, the priesthood of God doesn't work, neither the priesthood of the mind. But there is always the opposite of this. And that's why it is written, even in Klippoth, which is the infernal world. So a lot of people that utilize magic, priesthood, in their own way. Priests of all religions that are really degenerated and that worship degeneration. In this day and age, that's very common. If we want to be assisted by the powers of God, we have to follow his commandments <coughs> and work against the ego that we have within. Because the ego that we have inside, which is legion, loves degeneration. And that's why we had to meditate. Also meditation, the comprehension and analysis of our ego, is a type of ceremony of the mind. Because the mind has to concentrate in this particular defect of vice that we have, and the heart has to comprehend it. But in order for the heart to comprehend the mind, the heart needs to be filled with energy. That energy is called Christ. And for that, we need to know how to crystallize the solar energy in the heart. And that is performed in what we call in Gnosticism, second chamber. Because the Lord is light, is solar light. And the solar light helps us to comprehend when we are in meditation, whatever we need to comprehend. And of course, the chastity, the channeling of the sexual forces in our organism is indispensable. That's why in this day and age you find a lot of atheism because atheists are fornicators. They mock divinity because they cannot perceive divinity. It's obvious that for the blind, the solar light doesn't exist. Even though he feels the heat of the solar light, but cannot see it. The same way, the atheist experience the life of that that we call God, but cannot see it because he has not the senses to perceive them or to perceive it. So that's why you find here that this is precisely the triangle related with priesthood because it's called Netzach, the mind, Hod, the heart, and Yesod, sex, the three brains. The three parts of our body have to be in activity for God in order for that to have results. Then we go into the higher triangle where we find our own particular spirit, where we find our own particular spiritual soul in our own human soul. All of us if we are men, we always dream with our princess. And the woman of her prince. The twin soul, we say. What is my twin soul? Indeed, the twin soul is inside. That soul that will fit perfectly with our own humanity. But to develop that, for that we had to develop the human soul first in order to find that mate 
spiritual mate. Meanwhile, we have to find this physical world, our particular, we said, soul mate. But unfortunately, not the soul mate that we find in the great mythologies that is perfect and beautiful, whether we are man or, or woman. Why? Because in order to share that beauty of that female spiritual soul or male spiritual soul, first we have to be perfect here. And then we enjoy the union of the two souls of the spirit, the divine and the human inside of us. Here in this physical world, we have anger, pride, greed, gluttony, laziness, lust, etc., etc. So therefore, when we ask for a soulmate, somebody appears there with lust, greed, anger, gluttony, laziness, envy, because this is what we are. And we have to face that and to work very hard in order for, in the future, have the joy of uniting ourselves with that beauty, which is the spiritual, that uh, is very difficult to find in this physical world. Then we find that the prayer says, O Gedulael, O Geburael, O Tifereth. That is addressing your own individuality. O Gedulael. El is God. Meaning, greatness of God. O greatness of God, my spiritual soul. O Geburael, O justice of God. O power of God inside. O splendors. Tifereth. You concentrate in this area of your chest when you are doing that to receive that energy from your own particular individual being. If we analyze the second triangle, we find that it is ethical. Why is it is called ethical? It is simply because ethics or upright behavior is primed there. There we know the might of the law. There we know good and evil, about what is good and evil. This triangle is the world of pure spirit, which is Atman, Bodhimanas, in Sanskrit. That is the Hindu Trimurti. Obviously, the center of gravity in this triangle becomes, as a simple glance, the human soul. That soul who suffers and who gives the human part to us, the Sephira Tifereth, coincides with the causal body. This triangle is also denominated as the triangle of the sun. Here we find the cosmic Christ, Chochma, who when so endowed manifests himself through the human soul, which is Tifereth in the Hebraic Kabbalah. This is called the Son of Man. In the Bible, you talk about the Son of Man, and people are always looking at the sky. So in the future, somebody will descend on the clouds. But the clouds means the mystery. The Son of Man comes in the mystery of the clouds, in the heart of the human being. Here in the heart is where the Lord unites with the human soul. That's why you find in the Christian pictures, the picture of Jesus pointing at his heart with a crown of thorns. That crown of thorns is precisely willpower. Is that pain that we have in the heart when we want to crystallize the spirit 
the soul in us. Because unfortunately, from the heart comes also the evil thoughts. And all that that we have in abundance. To fight against that is heart against heart. The heart that says, Father, if it's possible, take this cup of, out of me. But not my will, but thine be done. That's the will of God. But in the heart also we have the self-willed. That desire of fulfilling bad things. So in this path, that crown of thorns is in the heart of every initiate that is trying to perfect himself or herself. Always feeling pain in the heart in order to fight. Because he wants chastity, meanwhile he discovered that he is lustful. He wants to be sweet, but he discovers that he is very angry. He wants to be happy for the good of the neighbor. But he feels in his heart envy and coveting many things that he doesn't need. So that fight is, of course, a long process. In which we are purifying the heart. And for that we need meditation. That is the daily bread of the wise. That's why the bread of the wise enters the heart. <coughs> and from the heart emanates the rainbow. That is precisely the bridge. Between the animal, the intellectual animal, and the superior triangle. Or as Nietzsche said in his book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. The man himself, the terrestrial man, is nothing but a bridge. A bridge between the animal, the intellectual animal, and the superman. Super is the upper triangle of the Logos, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, above. Keter, Chokmah, Binah, the top of the tree of life. So when we are in this path, we are that bridge. The terrestrial man. So we have to fill our souls with a super substantial bread of life in order to pass that bridge. Do you remember the Nordic mythology? That the gods, in order to go to Asgard, the abode of the gods, they have to walk on top of a rainbow. Do you see a rainbow after a strong rain? Try to walk on top of it. It's not easy, right? Why not? Because we are very heavy. In order to walk the rainbow, we had to be humble. But if we feel in our heart too much pride, we fall into the abyss. So that rainbow is made with the super substantial bread of God. That super substantial bread of God is light, is Christ. Because the solar light is Christ that makes that rainbow of seven colors. And then you go up there and walk to the top. And for that you had to, I repeat, to develop the virtues of the heart, which is humbleness. The proud, the vain, difficult to go up to that uh, bread of life. Rainbow.
Now let us go. Into the left side. Which is called Bina. The Holy Spirit. It says. Binael be thou my love. In order for. The Holy Spirit to descend. And to be your love. You have to work a lot. In your lust. To disintegrate. The ego of lust. In order for that love to descend. But the Holy Spirit. Really is merciful. And descends. According to your level. Be my love. Of course, here you find. Quan Shi Yin. The Divine Mother. Quan Shi Yin. Is feminine. The force of the Holy Spirit. Is the Divine Mother. That has to descend. Master Samael says. The sexual flame is without any doubt. Simultaneously. A Jehovistic and Vedantic truth. Jehovistic means that it belongs to Jehovah. Jehovah appears in the tree of life as Jehovah Elohim in the Sephira Bina. Vedantic means from the Vedas, from India. But also we find the Quan Shi Yin from Taoism. The sexual flame is the goddess of the world. Always worshipped by the wise. When it awakens it confers illumination unto us. The erotic flame confers unto us the divine wisdom which is not of the mind and which is beyond time. She is the one who gives the mukti of final beatitude and the jnana, knowledge, wisdom of liberation. To reach that high, we had to work a lot. To have the grace of seeing the Divine Mother, that she can appear in any shape. She has no form, but takes any form that will please her devotee. But it will appear or might appear also. Like a light. Like a purple light. In a circle. Illuminating your mind. Just like that. Because God has no form. But takes any form. Binael be thou my love. And then we go into Chokhmah. Which is the Sephira of the Lord, the Son, the Christ, the cosmic force. Ruach Chokmael, be thou my light. Ruach means spirit in Hebrew. Chokmael, wisdom of God. Ruach Chokmael, spirit of of the wisdom of God. Be thou my light. That reminds me in this very moment. Solomon. When that. yod He vav He Jehovah. Which is the Ruach Chochmael. Descended to him. And asked him. Ask whatever you want. And I will give you. And then Solomon says. A wise answer. I want Wisdom. In order to guide your people. And God said, since you are asking for it, that will be granted unto you. And moreover. So that light is the light of Chokhmah, wisdom. Which in India is called Vishnu. And that in Christianity is called Jesus Christ. Quetzalcoatl is called in Mexico among the Aztecs. Cuculcan among the Mayans. Viracocha in the land of the Peruvians. In Peru. Avalokiteshvara among the Chinese. Quan Yin as well. Has many names. 
The Sefer Chokma or the Hebraic Kabbalah is the cosmic Christ, the Christus, his Vishnu among the Hindus. The second logos, Chokma is love, the Agnus Dei, the immolated lamb. It is the fire that burns since the beginning of the world in all of creation for our salvation. Chokma is fire and on their lies the depth of all organic and inorganic matter. Solar energy is astral light. Its essence is the Christonic power which is enclosed in the fertile pollen of the flower, enclosed within the heart of the fruit of the tree, enclosed within the internal secretion glands of the animal and the human being, the sexual energy. That is Christ. That is Chokhmah. So when you said, Ruach Chokhmael be thou my light, he says, he who wants to come after me had to deny himself, take his cross daily, and to sacrifice for humanity. That is the way. You see that uh, beautiful uh, graphic of the Hindu pantheon is the Lord Vishnu. He who penetrates everything. A beautiful archetype. And finally, we reach the very top, the crown. And then we find here this beautiful image of Tonatiu which symbolizes the elder of days, Keter, the father of all the lights. Be that which thou art, and thou shalt be, O Keteriel, O crown of God. That is the elder of the days, symbolizing many religions in different ways. I found this graphic which really impressed me. Mighty powerful. <coughs> that elder of days, Keter, is the one that said to Moses, Eheye, Asher, Eheye, I am the one that I am. We wrote here, Sephiroth, Eheye, Asher, Eheye. Because here, this is. The elder of days is an eternal becoming. That's why he said, Be thou which thou art, and thou shalt be, or that you shall become. And he answers, I am the ten sephiroth. Because all of that emanation emerges from, from the crown down. So in other words, physically speaking, we are the last emanation of Keter, our physicality. And that's why our physicality is filled with energy, with solar force. Indeed, each one of us has in the depths of our consciousness a venerable elder. This is the first Logos. The Kabbalists denominate him Keter, crown. The Ancient of Days is androgynous, meaning man and woman at the same time. Keter is the first and the synthesis of our being. The Elder of Days is the first terribly divine emanation of the abstract, absolute space. The Ancient of Days is original in each human being. He is the Father, therefore, there are many fathers in heaven as there are human beings on earth. When the Ancient of Days reaches the realization of the ten Sephiroth in himself, these sephiroth shine in the world of light as precious gems, resplendent stones within the body of the Ancient of Days. May one day we experience the Ancient of Days and see what is that first part of our being that is in the highest level of consciousness. But for that we have to work. And this is what this invocation 
of the wise man Solomon is teaching us. Now, let us go into the last graphic. Where we find in the world of formation and the world of the archetypes all the different names that this invocation brings to us. Remember, all of that is inside of us and also outside. Because there are many angels that have developed all of that. That's why they are almighty. You want to become almighty? Develop all of that within. You have all of those elements in potentiality, but not in activity. Jesus have all of them in activity. Moses have all of them in activity. Mohammed have all of them in activity. These archetypes do not become an activity just because you believe in Moses or because you believe in Jesus or in Muhammad or in any other great master. They came and taught us the way to develop that. And this is precisely what the wise Solomon, who was another master that developed that completely, delivered us in order for us to develop it. Again, when we are doing that invocation, we descend again to the physical world in order to invoke the forces that we already explained up to the top. And we say, Ishim, assist me in the name of Shaddai. In the world of archetypes, Shaddai el Hai is the name of God that we have to invoke in order to work in the priesthood. This name Shaddai is very common in Judaism. When you go into any house, of any religious uh, person from Judaism, you find in the side, one of the sides of the door, the name written in Hebrew, Shaddai. That is translated in different manners as Almighty. And before entering or leaving, they sometimes kiss or sometimes put the hand in their lips, and then after that, the holy name, Shaddai, which is Yesod. Yesod is the door to enter, as you see, into the Holy of Holies, because the number nine synthesizes all of this that we are explaining here. So Shaddai, so when you said, Ishim, assist me in the name of Shaddai. That means that you are invoking all of the angels that reach that perfection in the world of Yetzirah, the world of formation, and saying, assist me in the name of Shaddai. That means that you are saying, I know who Shaddai is. I practice chastity with my wife. I developed my sexual energy. Therefore, I ask you, Ishim, assist me in the name of Shaddai. Any master of the internal worlds of the White Lodge is an Ishim. Ish means man as well in Hebrew. Ishim, plural. Sometimes it's translated as people. But not the ordinary people. Ishim are the ones that are initiates, that work in this magisterium. So Ishim assists me in the name of Shaddai. And then you go directly into the great power of the sex, which I call Kerubim. Kerubim assists me in the name of Adonai. Adonai 
is the name of God <coughs> in the word of Atziluth, translated as the Lord. You remember this uh, name, Kerubim, is written in the Bible. It is written there that when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, then Jehovah Elohim put a cherubim with a sword, avoiding the entrance of the unworthy fornicators, which is the door of sex, Yasad. That's the cherubim. Many esotericists, they say that that cherubim is Lucifer, the sexual potency that is avoiding the entrance of the unworthy ones. Of course, and the sword that is brandished from one side to the other is the blood, the blood that circulates in our body. When we are engaged in the sexual act, the blood is circulating and give a strength, give erection to the man and humility to the woman. And they are engaged in that sexual act and the blood circulates and is avoiding the impure to enter. When the impure fornicates, ejaculates the sexual force, which is the orgasm of the animals, and then they are ejected from the Garden of Eden, which means bliss, voluptuousness. But if they control the spasm and transmute the energy into light, and then the guardian says, pass. And then you enter into the temple of God that edifies the mind and like the splendor, your salty breath of an eternal youth. But remember the cherubim had to assist you in the name of Adonai, the Lord. You had to know how to worship the Lord. And you go up into the hod and you say, Let us go here. Into the second. <coughs> we are here. We said. Beni Elohim. Be my brethren. In the name of the son. And by the powers of Sabaoth. The Beni Elohim. Translates into English. The children of God. Or the children of the gods and goddesses. Be my brethren. In the name of the Son, which is the Cosmic Christ, the light of glory, which is Hod, and by the powers of Sabaoth, Sabaoth means army. The Lord of army are related to all of those angels, which is called the children of God, the Beni Elohim, that gather in the astral light. And you are invoking them in order to assist you in the prayer that you are doing or in the work that you are performing. And then you go into Netzach and say, Elohim, do battle for me in the name of Tetragrammaton. The Tetragrammaton is yod He vav He, the four-letter name of God. And in here, the name of God is Elohim Sabaoth. So you are invoking the other level of angels of Yetzirah that are called Elohim Sabaoth. He says, assist me. Or do battle for me in the name of the Tetragrammaton. You see? The mind. When your mind is invading you with thoughts that really bother you and are an obstacle for your development, Concentrate in that part of that prayer and said, Elohim, Elohim, do battle for me in the name of the Tetragrammaton. 
in order to eject those lustful thoughts or angry thoughts or whatever type of thought that is bothering you and that is taking you out of the order of your spirit. Because Netzach is the mind. And then you go and said, Malakim, protect me in the name of Yod, He, Vav, He. Or you can say, Malakim, protect me in the name of Yod, Chava. Yod, Chava is Yod, He, Vav, He. Jehovah. Malakim, kings and queens are the translation. But in Kabbalah, we call Malakim any master of fifth initiation of major mysteries that reaches the level of Tifereth. You see, Malkut 1, Yesod 2, Hod 3, Neza 4, and Tifereth is fifth. So anyone that reaches that level is an angel. Is in the level of the angels called Malakim, or a king, or a queen. Any master of fifth initiation of mere ministers, Kabbalistically, is called an angel. So therefore, don't uh, be confused if any master of that area is called angel, because Malakim are the three Malakim or the three kings, the wise men that were visiting in their heart the solar light, the Christ. The three wise men. It's because at that heart are three levels that we have to develop. We are talking here about the level of Solomon, which is the golden man that in Greek is called To Soma Heliakon, the solar body of the solar man, or the golden body. The one that has the Merkaba. And then we go to the seraphim, which are the creatures that are at that level, in the, in, in the level of Geburah. The seraphim are, clo are called serpents in the Bible, F fiery serpents or fiery serpents, because are very powerful. Se seraphim clings my love in the name of Eloah. In order for you to understand how you clean your love in the name of Eloah, Eloah is goddess, in other words, the goddess. Clean my love in the name of the goddess means that when you are working with a sexual potency of Geburah that goes into your heart, you have to say, my mother, my goddess, help me to clean my heart. This seraphim, because the seraphim, when they descend into the physical world, also are the sexual potency. In the book of Numbers in the Bible, you read that the Israelites were suffering because the seraphim were biting them. That means that they were incapable of controlling the sexual potency. And they were reaching, of course, on chastity. Therefore, they were hurt in their souls. And Moses said, well, worshipped the brazen serpent, which is the opposite, which is called Eloah. The divine fire of Kundalini. And then we find Hasmalim enlightening me with the splendors of Elohim and Shekinah is here. It's called the Hasmalim. This in the normal language means electricians. People that deal with electricity. That's a Hasmalim. But in Kabbalah, is somebody that controls the sexual force completely. Because he said, controls the waters of sexuality. He says, Hasmalim enlighten me with the splendors of Tifereth and the Shekinah 
So Shekinah, as you know, is the fires of your heart, your divine mother that you have to invoke. Then we say, Aralim Akt Bina. That's the will of God is Bina. Act. O Fanim, revolve and shine. O Fanim means wills. Here, in the right part of your brain, when those wills are active, you are very spiritual. And there you can penetrate into the world of the spirit. When all the wills, called chakras, are active. Fanim, revolve and shine. How do you make that to shine? Well, by putting in activity your chakras. All of us know about the chakras, all the seven churches that are in Asia. And then we go to the very top, and we say, Hayot HaKadosh. You see, Hayot, Haya means life. Haya, also animal. But animal is rooted in anima, which means soul. The very soul, the power of the animal, which are related with the four elements. In conjunction, Haya is singular, but in conjunction is Hayot. You said, holy animals. Hayot, the sacred. Ha means there, the sacred. The sacred animals. Hayot ha kadosh. Cry, speak, roar, bellow. They are addressing the four elements. Cry, the air. Speak, the water. Roar, the fire. The lion, bellow, the earth. Those four forces are in Egypt, in the Sphinx. You see, the Sphinx of Egypt has the powers of a lion, roar. The legs of an ox or bull, bellow. The face of a human being, speak. And the wings of the eagle, Cry. When you develop those four creatures called Hayot Ha Kadosh, it's because you are very high. And those creatures that are on top of Keter, those angels, are almighty. And then you are invoking them, and you said, Hayot Ha Kadosh, cry, speak, roar, bellow. And you are addressing the very top of the triangle, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Means Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. And then you descend for the last time from the very bottom of yourself. And you said, Shaddai. That's the foundation of all of this invocation of the temple. Adonai. The God of your body. Yod Chava in your heart. And then you reach the part here, which is Keter, and then you said, you visualize God there. When you, with your imagination, you see God in the very top of all of this invocation, you said, Eheye, Ashe, Eheye. You are what you are, or you shall be. Of course, when he said that, he says, I am what I am, but you are not that. So you are saying, be what you are, and you shall be. That is the translation of, eh, hey, ye, asher, eh, hey, ye, when you said it. He is what he is. But when God said it, because it's on top, he says, I am what I am. So understand that. Visualize that. And then you said, Hallelujah. 
you see hallelujah hallelujah visualizing him because he has a two polarities ja man and woman male female positive and negative hallelujah 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 and then again you are addressing in this triangle amen 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 so when you recite that invocation you are seeing all of that comprehending all of that in order to have a strength because if you just say it by memory without knowing what you are saying it doesn't work or maybe it will work but in one percent the negative percent so this is in synthesis the prayer of the Lord do you have questions Yeah, the question is how is Eheye Ashe Eheye related with this invocation? How that force is going to become? That force become what he will become if we work. That means like uh, sometimes people say this is like a blasphemy. That God needs our help in order for him to be? Yes. Whoever God is within each one of us, he needs to be remembered. From second after second. And then when you say, hey, yeah, she, hey, yeah, obviously you are addressing the higher part of himself. And then he blesses you and he sends the energy in you because you are the lower part of him. Obviously you are him, but in the lower part. And this is how you work. But obviously when you reach that level is because you are ready are doing what we explained from the beginning, the alchemical work. Because this is how this invocation of Solomon works. Works together with the tree of life and the tree of good and evil. Tree of knowledge, which is alchemy. Hmm? The two polarities and all the parts of the being together. The two trees, in other words. Uh, true master works with the two trees. What is your question? Bezalel is one of the parts, archetypes that we had to put in activity that will work with the Ark. The Ark of the Covenant is in Yesod. That's the Holy of Holies. When you know that, then you work with him. And of course, if you read the, I don't remember which book of the Bible, oh, Kings, Book of Kings, when he described uh, the two columns of the temple, Yakin and Boaz, which are the men and the woman, but also represents many levels. Because we are, we will say here, explaining this in synthesis. We can go in each triangle or in each sephira and explain about that really is very deep. Another question? Well, Tutankhamun means the glory of Amon, right? On the, in other words, the glory of Amen, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit incarnated in him. We, to reach that level, for said, this person has Father, Son, and Holy Spirit incarnated. That is a glory of Amen, means Tutankhamun. This is the meaning of that, that name. It is not easy to reach that level. First, let us incarnate the human soul. And then if we go deeper and deeper to reach that level in which we are a golden man, completely, no spat, 
no defects, no vices, no errors, no sins. Perfect, the image of God. Your question? When Tutankhamun uh, himself reached the self-realization of his being, and then his body was mummified uh, as an honor, and put all of that that we f they found in, in his tomb, and somehow it was uh, desecrated. Let's call it right. Desecrated, and uh, uh, of course. People that uh, went into that tomb, they didn't understand all the symbols. And still they don't understand. They have theories, etc., about Tutankhamun. But really, if you want to understand Tutankhamun, study the Bible, the life of Solomon. Then you will understand what is that. Exactly. The question is about the cobra that is on the forehead, Netzach, of Tutankhamun. That's of course, but no, it's only the serpent cobra, it's also the vulture, head. That means that he reached absolutely death, complete death of sin. Is no sinful being. That the, the, means that the vulture is here, the, the symbol of death in his mind. To control that, or to achieve that, and to have uh, in your crown, you see, in your forehead, the cobra and the vulture, that means that you reach the level of perfection thanks to Saturn. Bina, the Holy Spirit, the serpent. The vulture, Saturn, death, also perfection. Do you have questions here? Yes. God as Father is wisdom. God as Mother is love. As Father, God resides within the eye of wisdom. The eye of wisdom is located between the eyebrows. As love, God is found within the heart temple. Wisdom and love are the two basal pillars of the Great White Lodge. Can we activate these two principles in you, in us by E-O? <coughs> but E-O. Well, it's a very good question to activate that wisdom and love. We have to reach the world of Bria. Because in the world of Bria is a triangle related with the sun, Chokmah, Christ, wisdom. And then Father there in the world of Bria, which is the second triangle of the tree of life, becomes wisdom. And the mother becomes love. And based on these two columns, which are really in the sephira da'at, which means knowledge, from there you see the two columns. And in order to activate those two columns of E-O, you had to really activate not only the two columns, but the central column. Because in the central column is the equilibrium of da'at, that's why the holy name of, uh, of Tifereth, which is the human soul, as you can see here in the world of Asiluth, is the very last graphic. The heart means the goddess of the heart and that the knowledge of God. Yod, Hei, Vav, Hei, which is the two polarities related with Tifereth. In order to unite the central column with the two columns, is E, A, O, the mantra. E, A, O. That's the holy name, the holy mantra of in alchemy. Yes? Well, how do you use the sexual energy to transmute power? How do you use chastity to control? Uh, and then I think she means if chastity is a means of restraining sexual energy, 
what would be an example of using sexual energy actively towards transient people? Well, the question is wrong because he's not restraining. The chastity is the outcome of transmutation. You see? That's chastity. Because in this day and age, people think that to be chaste is to, be, uh, to avoid sex, to be salivate, and not to do anything. No. Chastity means to transmute. Transmute means to transform your matter, which is called sexual energy, sperm and semen, into energy. And to channel that in your spinal column. Ida and Pingala, and also in the center, on the, the column of the equilibrium, that's to transmute. Obviously, when you are transmuting your sexual energy, you are putting into activity the other forces which are inside of you, because you are working with a very foundation, which is sex, from the very bottom, and then you develop. If you are discharging the sexual energy, misusing it, as in this day and age, everybody knows how to do it. We don't need to teach you how to do it. So you know how to, do, how to discharge your body with the sexual energy. Obviously, you cannot develop that. You have to retain it and to transmute it. And for that, you need willpower. And what's the specific method for that? If you are single, you have to learn the science of the breath called pranayama. The pranayama for singles learn how to channel those forces in themselves by knowing how to uh, concentrate in your nostrils, your breathing exercises, and how to sublimate that energy through your two nadis or pingala and ida in your spinal column. If you are married, you have to do exactly the same thing, but in the sexual act which is more difficult. Because it's easy to sit down and to do your pranayama and to transmute, right? And concentrate and even pray to your Divine Mother for that energy to rise. But when you are in the sexual act, you have to do the same thing. And then you have to face your partner there and to talk, help me here, I will help you, and etc. In order to do that, because the sexual organ is an activity. There is an er erection in the man, there's humility in the woman, and the fire is the stronger, like millions of times stronger than the pranayama. And to channel that is called chastity. This is what we call sexual magic, or maituna, between husband and wife. No adultery. You have to follow the rules of alchemy, follow the Ten Commandments. Do you have another question? Yes. Are there any resources available that you know of that I can study to learn more about the indication of the Pater Noster in relation with the chakras? The Pater Noster in relation with the chakras. Really, the Pater Noster in the Invocation of Solomon encloses all the chakras. If you want to learn more about the seven chakras uh, or the seven churches, read the book of Revelation. The very beginning explains Kabbalistically and alchemically how to activate those chakras in the same way that we are explaining here, but with other language. The seven churches that are in Asia are the physical body. To activate them is by practicing chastity in the way that we explained. And if you have the book, The Perfect Matrimony by Samael on the or, you will learn there how to do the sexual magic, husband and wife. And the yellow book, it's a simple book that teaches the singles, the bachelors and bachelorettes, how to transmute the sexual energy while they are singles. And that's a way to activate the chakras. Because the seven churches or the seven chakras that are in Asia are related with the seven senses that the soul develops. When you start doing that, and then you start developing telepathy, clairvoyance, clairaudience, intuition, polyvoyance, remembering of past lives, astral projections, 
and many other things that are really a normal development or a normal action of any developed soul. When you are not a developed soul, you read in the internet and say, oh, astral projection, I would like to experience that. For somebody that does that, this is something common. You know? So this is the base in order to develop all of that. Yeah? Yes, when I refer to husband and wife, I refer to those couples legally marry under the law of God. God is the creative sexual force. So once you perform the sexual act, you are united by the creative force of the Holy Spirit. If you like to perform that in social life, in any religion, in order to satisfy your parents your relatives, then you can do it in a church. But the real marriage is when the man penetrates the woman. And that very moment, that union endures for eternity. Even if they are not legally married by the man. Another question? Thank you very much. The presentation of this lecture was made possible by donations from listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most Gnostic schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every single donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticRadio.org. For questions and deeper understanding of this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing and available from booksellers worldwide. Visit GnosticBooks.org to learn more. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Mm-hmm.